This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional and it is always recommended to hire a pest control pro in your area to perform any pest control in or outside your home. Pesticides can harm you and your loved ones. Anyone who is performing the information in this video is doing so at their own risk. If you decide to try the info provided in this video, please always check with the local laws in your area and read the labels of any product you use. The label is the law. Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control and today we're going to talk about bed bugs. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to the channel. And speaking of subscriptions, if you go to my channel uh, and you click over to the community tab, I actually put polls there all the time. Like, what would you like to hear about this week? What would you like to hear about next week? I'm doing a live stream on Thursday night. What would you like to talk about? So if you really want to, you know, interact and, and be part of the show, uh, just, you know, if you have any questions that you want me to answer for you, that's one of the best ways to do it. And, you know, talk back and forth with some of my other you know, subscribers and stuff like to follow me there. And so if you follow the channel, you'll get updates to when I post it in there too. And that's what this video is about. So I put up a poll and I asked people to vote for what video content they'd like to see next and overwhelming overwhelming were bed bugs so i had a bed bug idea and i wanted to talk about it so here we are let's talk about it so one of the questions i get asked a lot is how can i prevent getting bed bugs how can i not get bed bugs is there any way that i can prevent bed bugs coming into my house so let me explain places so one of the ways that one of the questions that I ask every one of my customers before I even treat their house for bed bugs, I'm just talking to them on the phone. Uh, I'll say, well, do you know how you got the bed bugs in the first place? Um, and a lot of people will actually say, no, I don't know how I got them. So I'm going to go over some ways that you can get bed bugs so that maybe you can avoid those places in uh, some places you can't avoid. And so I'm going to talk about how you can prevent bringing them home as well. Like I said, if you really like the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up on all my updates. And also, like I was saying earlier, Thursday nights, that's when I do my live streams. I, go, I get on live. Uh, it's not one of these gamer channels where I just play a video game for three hours. I actually sit down at my desk and I ask questions, answer questions. I pop up my screen, I share my screen on my computer, I research, and I show you ways that I have gotten rid of bed bugs. I even show people, uh, you know, I, I draw so you can see, like, you know, treat this area, treat that area. Target your pest control to here and here to get rid of this problem, whether it's bed bugs, roaches, fleas, whatever it is. Um, you know, that's what the live stream is for. I have a phone number. You can call me. It's a Skype number. So, you know, you don't have to have Skype. You can just call me on a regular telephone and you can ask a question live on the air, much like another, like call in radio shows and stuff like that. The only thing is when you, when you do call in, make sure that your computer volume's down so that I don't hear myself because it, it makes a very confusing audio recording. But anyway, <laughs> uh, enough about that. Live streams, you know, Thursday night after nine o'clock Eastern time. That's usually when I pop on there. Uh, also, if there's ever a product you're curious, like, well, what does Jason use for this problem? Or what does Jason use for that problem? I have an Amazon page. You can go there. You can see all of the products there. I do get a kickback. It's like a 3%, something like that. It depends on the product you buy, on what type of you know commission they pay me. But it's not very much, honestly. And if you can find it cheaper elsewhere, I just want you to be able to find a good location where you can kind of find everything all in one spot and uh, so you can look at it. I'm a very visual learner. I'm a visual kind of person. In fact, when my wife sends me to the grocery store to pick up, you know, groceries or whatever, she will actually give me a list of pictures so I can figure out exactly what name brand she wants, you know, because my wife's picky. She's like, I want this brand. I want that brand. No, I don't want that type of butter. I want that type of butter. You know, she's real picky like that. So she'll send me a picture and say, that's what it looks like, Jason, so you can find it. 
So that's what the Amazon's for. It's got lots of pictures there. You can scroll through and you can actually see what the product looks like. So you don't buy the wrong thing because this is your money and I'm trying to help you save money. So anyway, let's stop talking about self-promotion. We're not going to talk about that anymore. We don't talk about bed bugs. So how do people get bed bugs? How did you get bed bugs in the first place? Like I said, maybe you don't know. Maybe you're, you're curious trying to figure out how you actually got them into the house. So there's lots of ways you can get bed bugs in today's world. It used to be back in the 80s, 90s, uh, you know, early 2000s, really the only way that people really got bed bugs were from hotels. Um, I mean, you might rarely get them from a friend or a family member, but back then it was strictly hotels, really. I mean, uh, you have a lot of international travel. People are coming in, they're staying in hotels, coming in from third world countries and places where they may not have as good of pest control practices as they do in the United States. And so they were bringing bed bugs into the hotels. And from there, they spread. Now, bed bugs are slow to reproduce um, in the first few months. And a lot of times you won't even realize you have bed bugs until you've, you know, you've been three, maybe six months with the infestation because they start to reproduce exponentially after about three months. It takes one female bed bug, if left alone, one female bed bug able to lay eggs, meaning she's had at least one blood meal and she's been inseminated. It, one bed bug left alone after it's like 12 months can become 38 million uh, because you know they, after they reproduce, um, but it, see now, now after a month, it's only like 27. So it's, it's really slow in the beginning, but it really kind of blows up after they've been allowed to reproduce for several months. And like I said, you're not going to know you have them. You might get a bite here. You might get a bite there. It's not going to be, you know, every single day. So bed bugs bite you once a week. They don't bite you every day. And the only reason they bite you in the early stages of life is to shed their skin. So they shed their skins like a snake. What they do is the egg is laid. The egg gestates for about six to 10 days. Then the egg hatches. The nymph bites you after a week of being hatched. So they don't bite you right away. They don't come out of the egg immediately like, oh man, I'm hungry, let me bite somebody. That's not how bed bugs are. They wait about six to 10 days to feed for the first time. And that's after they've grown, they've grown in size, they're ready to shed their skin, so they bite you, they engorge on blood to help shed that skin, and then they wait another week to 10 days to bite you again. And that is, in the professional pest control field, they call that an instar. Other bugs that have instars are uh, stink bugs, um, cockroaches. You know, these are bugs that have instars. In fact, you may have seen an albino roach. People call them albino roaches, which really, it's just a roach that has recently shed its skin, and it's a white color until it turns the tan brown that we all know that roaches look like. So this is, this is a real common thing in bugs where they shed their skin. So a bed bug takes anywhere from 45 to 60 days to become a mature adult because they go through five instar phases. So it's, it's once every week to 10 days, they bite you. Then they shed their skin. Once every week to 10 days, they bite you. Then they shed their skin. Once every week to 10 days, they bite you. Then they shed their skin. So they do that five times. That's called an instar. And after they shed their skin for the fifth and final time, they can bite you every day, every two or three days, and lay eggs. Um, and so that's why people don't usually realize they have bed bugs until they really have bed bugs. I mean, they've had them for several months. Most houses that I treat for bed bugs, when I enter the home, I can usually estimate pretty accurately uh, within a few weeks that the person has had the bed bugs uh, for a certain amount of time, and most people have had them within three to six months. That's typical. That's, you know, because now they're starting to get bit. They may have even seen one on their uh, you know, their bed frame. They might have seen one on the wall or something like that because now they're coming out. They're letting themselves be known. They've reproduced to the point where they're trying to you know, get a blood meal more often because now they're ready to lay eggs. They're ready to reproduce. And so uh, that's why you start seeing them pretty regular. So how do you know where you got the bed bugs? Well, for one, I mean, the obvious thing. Do you have friends who have complained about bed bugs? If you have, don't go to their house. Don't let them come to your house. Don't 
because you have to treat it like head lice. All right. If you found out your friend's children have head lice, you're not going to let them come over to your house and play with your kids until they get rid of their head lice problem. So if you have friends who have bed bugs and you know they have bed bugs, don't let them come to your house because they have bed bugs. Bed bugs travel on clothing. They travel on shoes. They travel on um, they, lots of different ways you can get them in the house. But the thing is, is you got to realize is that people bring bed bugs. This is how you get bed bug problems is people, people. Always people. All right. Movie theaters. Movie theaters, you can get them there. I know we're starting to go back to the movies again. People are starting, you know, these summer blockbusters they got coming out this year. Um, You know, people go to the movies. And for the same reason as you don't want people coming into your house that have bed bugs, these people aren't hermits. They go out places too. They go to restaurants. They go to movies. They use public transit. And the bed bugs that are on their clothing will get on the chairs in the movie theater. They will get on the chairs at the restaurants. They'll get on the chairs on the city bus. Um, Buses are very common. In fact, I had a customer once whose child was actually riding the school bus, and they had a real bad problem with bed bugs. And I told him, I said, I'm pretty sure the bed bugs are coming in from someone that's continuing to bring them in the house. And he wasn't sure who it was. So he actually went out and followed the school bus one day, picked his son up at school, followed the bus all the way home, and found out that about 10 stops it took before his kid was should have been dropped off. Out of those 10 stops, five people were throwing away their furniture. That's 50% of the people in his neighborhood were actually throwing away their furniture. And he's like, everybody doesn't just get all together at once and say, hey, let's throw away our couch. And he's like, one person threw away their couch. He said, look, like a brand new couch, maybe had it six months. And, you know, no one throws away brand new furniture. And I'll, I'll interject here and I'll say, if you see furniture on the side of the road or bags of clothing or something like that, don't put this stuff in your car. Don't bring it home. Don't put it on the truck. There's a reason. There's a reason that this stuff is being thrown away. It's because it's garbage. All right. It's probably infested with bugs. You wouldn't throw away a brand new couch. No one does that. No one buys brand new furniture and then sits it on the curb. They don't. So don't bring your stuff in your house because it's probably infested with bugs. So that being said, don't buy used furniture. Don't go to Goodwill. Don't go to thrift stores, consignment shops. Don't buy used furniture. Don't buy used clothing. You know, people have brought furniture in from these places. I'll tell you another place people get bed bugs from are, uh, you know those places where you go and you rent your furniture? So like you'll rent your furniture by the week uh, maybe you pay by the month. Maybe you pay $27 a month for you know a couch or a TV or something like that. These places are notorious for bed bugs. They um, take advantage of the fact that people don't understand a lot about bed bugs. There was a customer of mine. Now, I'm not going to mention names of businesses. I'm not here to slander anybody. But there was a rent-by-the-week furniture or rent by the month, or I don't honestly, I don't know how they do it. Usually, it's like by the week or by the month is is how people pay for this stuff. Um, they had gone in and they set up to rent a uh, couch. They it, the couch was used. It was a used couch because a lot of these places when they sign when you sign a contract with these people that you're going to rent furniture for a certain period of time. You have the furniture brought into your house. Now, if you decide you want a new couch. Well, then they can come and take that old couch away, the one you've had for maybe two or three years, take it away, put it back in the rent-a-center place or whatever, the rent furniture place or whatever, and bring you a new one. Well, what do they you do with that used piece of furniture? They can't sell it like new anymore. It's not new, it's used. So they take it, they put it on the showroom floor, and they slap a, you know, reduced price sticker on it or, you know, pre-owned uh, couch sticker or something like that, and because you're buying it from a store, you assume that the bed or the uh, couch or the chair, the lazy boy recliner. Um, actually, this this lady, she had actually purchased a medical chair because her husband had had a stroke and he couldn't stand up, and so the chair would help him stand up. Now those chairs, some of those chairs are two, three thousand dollars, and she was able to get it from this 
rent a furniture store place for, you know, I think she told me it was like 700 bucks, which is a huge discounted rate. That's really cheap. But she brought it in her house, and she set it up in her living room, and it was full of bed bugs. Um, it was awful. And so but the, the story gets worse. When she called the store, because the first thing you do is you're going to call the store and you're going to complain. You're going to say, you know, what did you do to my house? You went and you gave me this piece of furniture and you've infested my house with bed bugs. I want my money back and I want you to pay to kill these bed bugs. And that, rightfully so, she has that right. They told her, they said, prove to us that you received the bed bugs from us because we believe you had bed bugs in your home before you re- you bought this chair from us. And so how do you prove it? How do you? As a customer, how do you prove you didn't have bed bugs before you became a customer? It's a bad way to treat your customer. It's it's not good for customer relations at all. It's it's not it's not but that's the way they treated her. And this same business has done this to other people. I had another lady who actually bought a used couch from these rent furniture store places. And she brought them into her house. And they said, prove it. Prove we gave you the bed bugs. So not only did they uh, not pay her um, or take the couch away or whatever. And she had to continue to make payments on the couch because they wouldn't take it back once she admitted she had bed bugs from this couch. It's like, well, you've got to have a receipt from an exterminator proving you eliminated these bed bug problems before we'll take this couch back. We're not going to take this couch back because we think you had bed bugs before you became a customer. And without a good lawyer and the budget to afford a good lawyer, you're not going to be able to go after these people. And they know that. And so they take advantage of, you know, you. They take advantage of you. All right. Most of these places that sell, you know, they rent TVs and couches, they go somewhere like Ashley or uh, Shules or Walmart even, and they buy these pieces of furniture and these appliances cheap, on sale. They buy them dirt cheap, and then they sell them to you at twice the price. You don't realize it's twice the price because you're only making like $27 a month payments, but you end up spending, if you take it all the way out to the end of that payment, you have spent twice as much as what the TV or the couch or whatever is really truly worth. And that's, you know, that to, in itself is just taking advantage of people that just don't make enough money or that they want to buy it now. They want it right now. They don't want to wait. And so my best advice to you is if you need a couch, if you need a chair, if you need a bed, wait and buy a brand new, never owned bed or never owned couch. Don't go Facebook Marketplace. Don't go buying this crap and bringing bed bugs and roaches into your house. Because roaches come to your house that way too, not just bed bugs. Roaches and bed bugs both. So you need to be sure that you don't get used furniture or anything like that. So we, we, we knocked that ball right out of the park. Um, public transit, that's another way people get bed bugs. But there's one way that a lot of people don't think. Now, I posted a video about this before. It didn't get a lot of clicks or likes or, or even views at all. But, and I'll post it up in the corner for you. It'll be right there. But um, it's an old video. Back in 2020, we had this horrible thing happen. All right? I can't talk about it. YouTube don't like to talk about it. It messes with the video. But... For the last two years, people have done home deliveries. People have had, uh, you know, everything delivered to the point they even get their groceries delivered to their house. They get, uh, you know, Amazon has has grown exponentially in size and and income. They are a huge, huge company now, and because of what has happened over the last two two years or so, um, so because of these home deliveries. And because these businesses, in order to, to keep up with the demand of, you know, products that people need, like groceries and, you know, DoorDash and stuff like that, where people don't really want to go out because they might be afraid, so they don't go out and they order stuff in. These people that work for these companies, 
a lot of them are using their personal vehicle to drive things around. They're coming to your house and they're dropping things off at your house and they've had it in their trunk or they've had it in their back seat. So here's a scenario. You got this company. They hire Bob. Let's say his name's Bob. All right? Bob goes out and picks up his daughter from elementary school. His daughter, unbeknownst to Bob, has brought bed bugs on her backpack from school. She jumps in the car, puts her backpack on the chair. A couple of bed bugs crawl off the backpack and get into the seat. Then Bob goes home. All right? He notices, oh, there, Bob works on the side. He works for uh, Instacart. So he's like, I see that there's an Instacart order for groceries at Kroger. So he goes to Kroger. He picks up your groceries. He puts them in his back seat. And right where those bed bugs are. The bed bug crawls out, crawls into the grocery bag. He brings the grocery bags in your house or sits them on your porch. You come out to the porch. You pick up your grocery bags. You bring them in the house. You set them on your kitchen table. Bed bug crawls out. You didn't know it was there. You had no idea. Maybe, maybe you, it's a Walmart delivery. And they brought in maybe a pack of shorts or underpants or something. And, and so you take that bag up to your bedroom. Because, well, you know, you need to put your underpants away in your drawers. So you take your bag upstairs. And the bed bug crawls out of the bag, crawls right up on your bed leg. But even if it crawls up on your dining room table, it's in your house. It'll get on your sofa. You know, sofa's not far from the kitchen or the dining room in most homes. And so, you know, that's the point, is now you're infested with bed bugs and you don't even know it. And like I said in the beginning of the video, two or three months go by and you've got a hundred bed bugs. Yeah, I mean, you've got quite a bit, quite a bit. You start noticing that you're infested. It's really bad infested. So what do you do? What do you do? Now, how did you get them? Think in your head. You'd never, you'd never assume that someone that did a delivery, I mean, they didn't come in your house. They dropped the bags off on your front porch. They didn't come inside your house. So what do you, you know, you don't realize that's how you got them. So it's really important that when you get bed bugs to look back and figure out what did you do in the last three months? What did you do in the last six months? How did you bring these things in your house? This is how you can avoid getting bed bugs, okay? So let's say you've never had bed bugs before. And I'm sorry, this is a long video, but it's very detailed. Let's say you've never had bed bugs before. You don't, you know, how do you prevent getting bed bugs? And that's what we're going to talk about now. We've talked about how you can prevent getting infested or getting reinfested from places. But let's talk about prevention. Let's say you can't, you can't change your, your daughter's bus. You can't change your daughter's uh, or your son's uh, school that they go to. You know, the school might be infested and they're coming home on the school bus. You don't have any way that you can actually transport them around. So they use the bus anyway. You just don't have that ability. So you feel defeated because you know the kids are bringing them in on the school bus and you can't stop that. So what, so, so, so how do you prevent getting bed bugs? Well, this is what you do. You treat your house. So I do a lot of rental houses. And this is how I deal with rentals. So rentals are really bad for bed bugs because you never know uh, who's going to come in your house and rent your house for a vacation. You know, I have I do vacation homes around Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia, and I've had homes where people have brought bed bugs into these rental homes. And I can't prevent the bed bugs from being brought into the house. But what I do is I kill them when they arrive. So I provide a monthly, not bi-monthly, not quarterly, monthly pest control. And I say that because a lot of these newer exterminators and even older exterminators have stopped doing monthly pest control. They do quarterly pest control or bi-monthly pest control and they act like that's enough. It's not. It's not enough. Not enough when dealing with bed bugs. Not enough when dealing with cockroaches. It's not enough. You've got to come every single month and treat once a month. So what I recommend is pick a day. Like let's say like today. Today is the first Wednesday of the month. So on my first Wednesday, every month, I treat my own house. All right, I have myself listed on a list and I don't forget. That way every first Wednesday of the month, about a month apart, always about a month apart because always the first Wednesday, I come out, I treat my house. 
my wife has put herself on the list so I don't forget to do it. So that's, that's what you have to do. You have to be consistent. You have to do it every month. You have to come out to the house, treat it every month for bed bugs. All right? You don't have to treat, well, you don't have to treat as thoroughly as if you were infested with bed bugs. You don't have to actually tear the bed apart and treat everything. But you can treat the legs of your bed. You can treat the base of the box spring. You know, you can treat the baseboards. Those are the places the bed bugs like to retreat to when they first come in a house. When they come in your house, those are the places they go to. They're attracted to baseboards, they're attracted to beds, they're attracted to chairs and sofas and stuff like that. So these bugs, if you brought them in on a book bag or you brought them in on a pair of tennis shoes or your pant leg or something like that, they're going to get on your furniture from the floor. They fall on the floor and they crawl up the furniture. That's what they do. So what you need to do is you need to treat those areas. You need to target those baseboards. Like So what I do when I go into a home, like let's see a rental home. I've got one home in particular I'm thinking of right now. I go in the house. I treat the baseboards throughout the entire house. And so what this does is if a person rents this house who has bed bugs in their luggage or, you know, on themselves or whatever, when they come in the house and the bed bugs crawl around looking for a place to hide before they get their blood meal, they crawl up on this furniture that's been treated or they crawl up on the baseboards, which have been treated, and they die before they infest. So they don't ever lay eggs. They don't ever, you know, bite somebody. And if they do bite somebody, they die because there's nowhere to hide. It's been treated. That is the absolute best way to deal with bed bugs, is a preventative pest control plan. Whether you do it yourself or whether you hire pest control, that is the best way to get rid or to never get a bed bug problem in the first place. Um, the pesticides I recommend for a preventative pest control treatment are... Alpine WSG. Alpine WSG is really good. That's what I use. That's the, that's the pesticide that I choose to use. Now, there are some issues with resistance um, when you treat with alpine and bed bugs. I have noticed myself in my own field, uh, in my own work, the own work that I do, I have noticed that with alpine WSG, the bed bugs have started to develop a mild resistance or even an immunity to the pesticide. So I wouldn't use it anymore as a elimination chemical like if somebody called me up today and they said hey I've got a bed bug problem I'm not going to go to their house and spray alpine because it's not as effective on bed bugs as it used to be but as a preventative measure it absolutely does a really amazing job to prevent bed bugs from actually getting a foothold in the house now what does resistance mean resistance is not the same as immunity immunity means it won't kill them at all resistance means it just takes longer to kill them than than it normally would. So typically resistance comes first. And so if you treat your house with Alpine WSG, you typically will kill anything that, that infests. If you really are worried that you might have a problem with chemical resistance, um, and then what I would recommend is actually just breaking down and purchasing Crossfire. The reason that I mentioned Alpine WSG first is because you can buy more of it at a cheaper price than what you would pay for Crossfire. Crossfire is anywhere from $35 to $50 a bottle. It's 13 ounces. You have to mix 13 ounces of that stuff in a spray tank. And one gallon is how much it makes, finished solution. And that's all you get. And you can't keep it over once it's mixed because it, it goes bad. It doesn't, you know, it goes bad in the tank. It doesn't go bad where you've sprayed it, but it goes bad in the tank. So you can't keep that stuff, you know, over 24 hours. Um, cross uh, Alpine WSG is a little different. It doesn't, it doesn't behave the same in the tank. It doesn't separate from the water like Crossfire does. And so it will, it will be better. It, I still recommend people take it out of their tank and clean their tanks when they're not using it. But, you know, just as that's just regular tank maintenance on your, your sprayers. But um, Alpine WSG, final answer, that's what I recommend. Um, so, and you could, like I said, you can find that on my Amazon page. But what you do is you mix it in a tank, you shake it up real good, you make sure it's really well agitated, really well mixed, and you treat around your baseboards. Alpine WSG actually allows for the treatment of box springs. And so what I do in this particular house, I was given an example for out of Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia, is I actually pull up the skirting all the way around the bed and I tuck it in and I treat the base of the box spring itself. 
so that if for some reason the bed bugs do get past the baseboard or they just don't come into contact with the baseboard and they crawl up on the bed to try to bite somebody while they're asleep, they have to crawl over the box spring first. It's the very first you know, thing they touch in the bed. And so they crawl up over that, they get in the chemical and they die. And since I've been doing this, this house has never become infested with bed bugs. They've had people bring them in, they've had complaints, but it never lasts past a month. They never have to have more than one treatment it ever, you know, and, and actually a lot of times I'll go behind myself and I'll say, okay, so you've got bed bugs at the house. All right, I'll go out there. I go out to the house and I check it and they're all dead. There's actually not any live ones. They might've come out and bite somebody before they died, but they still die, you know, so they're not laying eggs. They're not using the blood meal to lay eggs or anything like that. So hopefully this video has not droned on too long. Hopefully I've given you good information that you can use to try to avoid bed bugs. And if you have any suggestions for a video that you would like me to talk about or any kind of information at all that you would like to know about anything pest control, leave it in the description below and I will get to you as soon as possible. You guys have a really great day, great life wherever you are. I really appreciate it. And don't forget, follow me. Come visit me on my live streams every Thursday night after 930 and I'll talk to you there. Y'all have a great one. And like I said, enjoy life. Thanks.